I can state that uh, <clears throat> the approach of being nimble or what in the world of technology is called agile. So what I described, by the way, is used widely in cutting edge businesses. It's, the system is called agile. And if you read the last couple of, not this one, but the previous two economic surveys, where we have explicitly talked about agile. Now your question is, this agile approach requires um, that you, that the political leadership restrains itself from creating, you know, insisting on the grand plan. And yes, grand plans are easier to sell than this fuzzier idea of iterative uh, 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 response. Uh, in fact, very often uh, in, the, in, in the short run, it may make the political leadership look weak. So I have to say that our political leadership was very clear from the beginning that they were going to do the right thing irrespective of how much pressure came and whether it's Prime Minister Modi or Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman, both of whom I worked with very very closely during this period they were unbelievably supportive of this idea in fact I would say many of these things are you know they feel it themselves it was their idea so I wouldn't say that there was any pressure at all at any point in time to come up with the grand plan. They fully appreciated the nature of what was a VUCA uncertain evolving situation and they were willing to, 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 to go with that despite a lot of pressure by the way if you will go back and look at the videos of that time you will see there were many Gyanis particularly from US based universities uh, who had to telling us what to do and you will see my response to that is wonderful advice kindly apply it to the country of your residence and leave us alone but one of the biggest things I believe in is something called skin in the game whatever you in fact I have I'm on record at that time uh, when some of these US based uh, <coughs> Uh, Gyanis were telling us do this do that helicopter money etc I said as soon as you've implemented these ideas in the country where your children will pay taxes I will do it so this is important that let me say first of all that our political leadership was clear-headed right in the beginning they did not get swayed by all the pressure from NGOs international Gyanis, economists, etc. They, they were willing to do what it required, sometimes difficult things. So you will remember, I think it was in the month of May or June of 2020, Finance Minister Nirmala Ji went through five days. Every day she would come and give a set of policies. Remember that? Every day she would come in, speak for one hour, here is a set of policies. Go back, next day come up with a set of policies. In some cases she changed some things along the way also. Now, when she did it, there were a lot of people say, oh look, every day there's a new mini budget. I'm sorry, you are in an uncertain situation. You have to adapt along the way. So you keep, you have to keep doing repeatedly. Every few months she had to come and present a new set of measures changing very often what she had just done before that requires nimbleness it also requires a very important character trait the willingness to listen to pay so nimbleness requires that you pay attention to what is actually happening not what your model says should be happening and be able to change along with it so they were willing to do that all the time and that requires enormous political courage it, and that is doesn't only happen because the leadership is has that I have to say the maturity of the people of India through what was very difficult times we held together as a society right every one of you will have in your little way seen or contributed to keeping your own community going whether it is the local Kirana shop guy 
who supplied people food and various goods on credit sometimes or kept track of mausi ji bahut din nahi aaye bread lene ke liye dekhiye ja ke kya hua uske inke ghar mein so the resilience of our society is very important very often these are things that you know dry economic models do not capture similarly the same bureaucracy administrative system that is usually very very inefficient and i'm not going to defend them but they were also did ultimately deliver those one those um, vaccines more than two rounds of it to over a billion people not a trivial thing to do so one of the things that we demonstrated to the world during this is one we had political leadership to do it that we have social and cultural strength that nobody believed we have three we have administrative capacity of delivery which also we usually spend all our time beating ourselves on but look at the way the rest of the world just fell apart and the incredible use of technology india is the only country in the world which not only did the largest vaccination program in the world but it also can tell you exactly how many times you on which date which vaccine you had please go and see the parchi that you get in the us okay you know jab wo chanda lene ke liye jo jaate hai na usme bablu ne 200 rupaye diye for local saraswati puja or whatever it was that is the kind of parchi you will get in the us when you get yourself vaccine anybody can make one at home i, I don't know why they insist on looking at it because literally anybody can create a vaccination uh, certificate in their backyard in in the us it and most of it is probably fake so point is we have certain strengths and what we need to do is to strengthen its ability to deal with a evolving world flexibly that is one of the reasons why we have been investing heavily in the if you look at the kinds of things that we invest in as a policy maker in the last decade or so they are all oriented towards flexibility rather than predetermined paths look at the policies we have put in place the gst right gst was basically a free trade agreement india signed with itself before gst india had 17 different taxes it was more difficult for in mumbai to trade with delhi than it was for mumbai to trade with shanghai for the first time we introduced it when we introduced it whenever we introduced it it was going to be chaotic right so one thing we could have done is spent another 10 years trying to fix all the bugs by the time we had fixed all the bugs new new things would have happened and we would never have fixed it so in a vuka world how do you introduce large reforms well you more or less fix figure out the contours of the solution you introduce it and then you fix it now this may seem counterintuitive but in fact that is the only way you can do it when gst was introduced many people said oh my god this doesn't work that doesn't work but let me tell you after it was introduced the problems that we actually had were not the problems the experts were telling us would happen most of these problems we had fixed but many of the problems we did have like for example the error correction button on the website didn't work properly they can only be found out by doing it so in fact in a vuka world very often it is better to do it and then fix it the same thing we did with the insolvency in bankruptcy court people thought oh my god what will happen so many things we have they'll go insolvent the world will end let us all put all of these into something called we used to put all these dying companies something called bifr most of you are not young enough to know about this it was basically a warehouse for dead companies which they were kept alive using tax payer money for decades sometimes instead we began to bankrupt them now when the idea this this law was passed of insolvency in bankruptcy in 2016 so when i joined the government in 2017 this was one of the things i was given to try and implement the idea was you know oh my god how are we going to do implement this so 
let us take a few small companies and try and bankrupt them and see what happens and then we will clean up the banks using it. So I came up with, I made the point that look, actually the complicatedness of a case is not correlated to the size of the case. So let us do it the other way around. Let's find the 12 largest cases and test them. So we in fact ended up with this term called dirty dozen. I don't know if you remember that. And 12 of the largest bankruptcies in India were just taken through the system for the first time. And with no idea what would happen when we actually went through that. And of course many things turned out wrong and you know the institutions had to be, the law had to be changed, all kinds of new processes had to be created. But as a result of which we ended up with a bankruptcy system. And as a result of which we ended up cleaning up our banking system. And our banking system despite the COVID shock today is cleaner than it was in 2016. So point I'm making to is one of the points about the VUCA world and this problem of agile is that you have to be willing to work, deal with a messy world. The world is not neat and clean. A living ecosystem is messy in which species die, new species arise, some species flourish, collapse. It's a messy, messy place. Anybody who is trying to create a rigid, fixed utopia is missing the point. And that is why all these utopian ideas always fail because they are not in concurrence with the reality of the universe.